<laughs> All right, Tyler Bachman, welcome on to the GDIY podcast for your profile episode. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Yeah, I uh, appreciate you having me on. It was very, very cool. Yeah. Um, I'm Tyler Bachman. I'm from Michigan, Southeast Michigan specifically. Um, been in the bird dog world for the last few years, but very much so uh, kind of an adult onset upland hunter, if you will. And uh, I pretty much just love chasing my dogs around the woods and shooting birds. Pretty love simple. It. Love it. Is this your first time to Pheasant Fest? It is. This is my first show. Um, I'm here with KLM GNA today, uh, working that booth, and but still get to sneak out and come talk to guys like you and meet people and look at cool stuff. And it's been a great time. Now, really enjoyed you, it. You just threw a whole bunch of letters out there. Somebody may have missed K- KLM and GNA. G- See, I can't even say it. Yeah. Why don't you go tell everybody what, what that is? Because the Kleiners, man, is some cool dogs. Yeah. Every time I say that, you know, I think I, it's like an Oscar Mayer commercial in my head. <laughs> B-O-L-O-G-N-A. No. Uh, KLM, GNA, Kleiner, Munsterlander, Group of North America. Love it. So, and uh, go ahead and break out what the difference between a Kleiner Munsterlander and a small Munsterlander. Sure. So the Kleiner Munsterlanders are specific. They adhere to uh, German confirmation standards and the JGHV testing system. So our club is actually a direct chapter of the Kleiner Club in Germany. Um, so we adhere to those confirmation standards. Uh, you have to pass two natural ability tests in order to breed your dog. Um, so mainly the difference is, you know, the, the more detailed confirmation, breeding, things like that. Yeah. Essentially, to, to try and sum it up the, e- the even easier is it's the equivalency of the Deutsch Drautar and the Deutsch Kurtzar yes. to the small Munsterlander, just yep. the German testing and lineage of Correct. the small Munsterlander. Um, so do you have a Kleiner right now? Not yet. Um, hopefully got a bun in the oven, though. Uh, <laughs> there's a gentleman in my NAVDA chapter that just started breeding, and I have been a complete and utter fan of his dog for many years, and he told me, hey, this is my last litter with this dog, and I'm like... Guess I'm getting a dog. <laughs> you know, I mean, there wasn't ready really much option. <laughs> yeah, my wife wasn't ready, so that took a little bit of convincing. But, uh, yeah, so once he told me it was the last letter, uh, you know, I, that was probably within the last couple of years I knew that information. So definitely, definitely getting one. Dog was bred last week. Uh, so hopefully by the middle of this month, get an ultrasound done and see if it's confirmed. So nice. very excited. So you do currently own some dogs, though. Absolutely. What do you have? So I have an 11-year-old German short ear pointer. Um, I got him in college and had no idea, really, that this whole bird dog world even existed. So didn't really do anything with him, to be honest. Uh, he is now my wife's dog and a couch potato and lives his best life, you know, chasing chipmunks in the backyard. Uh, then I have a 4-year-old German short hair who um, I started NAVDA with. And went through all the testing there. So I did the NA test, UPT, and utility test with her. Just to kind of cut my teeth, get used to handling a dog in a test. I'd never done anything like that before. You know, meet some good people, uh, learn training tactics, and all that. Yeah. So, No, that's cool. So you got your first German Shorter. I'm always, I'm always su- surprised, but not surprised, when somebody gets a, a bird dog like a German short hair and they don't even they're not even aware that it's really a bird dog right yeah so so like what what intrigued you about the German short hair just looks like so many other people yeah so it's kind of a a funny thing actually uh my dad growing up in his office he um loves hounds and hunting dog art okay so growing up he like my mom he had like a cool calendar with all these really neat pictures in it she cut it out put pictures all over his office and uh, we eventually ended up getting a short hair when I was younger, but my dad just liked them, right? So that was kind of my first exposure to the breed. And then, so I wanted to get one. And you know, the kind of the rest is history, but not long. Well, just before I got Dixie, who's my four-year-old short hair, I went to, a, I was a big waterfowl guy. And I was like, oh, you know, I want to try this upland hunting thing, get some more wing shooting in. So I went to a pheasant preserve and the guy, you know, had a short hair and I'm like, all right, like I knew what these dogs did, but I didn't like really know. 
Yeah. And so it just got me real fired up, and uh, I was like, man, I'm getting another one. I'm going all out. <laughs> and the rest is history from there. Yep. So you've tested. Talk to me about the journey within NAVDA, just figuring that out. Like, how did you learn how to train it, and was it just – you got you got the second one and you just went full bore navda or did you kind of start training and did what a lot of other people do and like i need help with this yeah so the guy that i got my first one for his name's gunner 11 year old uh he told me about navda but i was a broke college kid didn't really know anything about it uh so i had like heard of it before and um so i had that in the back of my mind when i got to do this new one excuse me and um I ended up going out to a training day, meeting a couple guys randomly when I was just running my dogs when, you know, she was real little, just getting her used to the field and whatnot. And they're super friendly and welcoming. And um, once the dog, you know, was a few months old and I can get her out there safely. And I went out to a training day. They instantly roped me in. Um, Cause when I, when I first started, all I wanted to do was a hunting dog. I was like, all I want, you know, I wanted a meat dog. You know, I was like, to the heck with all this testing stuff like that ain't for me right it's not why you got into it. yeah and uh so as time went on um yeah like i said they wrote me in right away i mean within 30 minutes of being there i was signing waiver and going help guys train and shoot birds over dogs and got to saw my first utility dog in action and then that's when the wheels started turning about the testing thing i'm like holy cow these dogs can get a bird shot over them stand there wait be told to retrieve it and i just thought i was like man that's that's beautiful i gotta give this a whirl so i ended up doing uh the na test that summer when my pup was she's like five months old got a 112 prize one thought i failed the thing (laughs) you know and everyone's like dude (laughs) you did did good you know the bird players like you know that was awesome that dog found she found eight well it's kind of a funny story she ran 10 yards on the field and there was like a random chucker that was there locked up beautiful point and the judge is like, basically like, all right, man, let's uh, let's go take a walk, see if we can find any more. She ended up finding eight birds, <laughs> kind of outshine the utility dogs. And judges were joking, like, throw that dog in my box on your way out. I'll take that thing in a heartbeat. <laughs> Be good to go. Yeah. So why do you think that you failed it? Um, The recall. So, like, uh, I wasn't, like, you know, this was before I got into the world. So Yeah, like, you didn't know what they were actually so scoring she was like, not yeah, scoring. Yeah, five months old, she was taking off two, 300 yards, pointing birds, and I can't, you know, the judges can't even get over there to see her. Right. Uh, you know, she had the one right out in the open initially and some couple other ones, so I was totally good. But, you know, getting her back and getting her in the mode and keeping her so they could judge what they were seeing was kind of challenging. So I thought I was done, you know. But the, yeah. the track went well. I knew she did good on that, and then the water was no big deal. Gotcha. So I thought it was just the field that was going to hang me up. Yep. So you got your little taste, and you did what, you know, you get a 112, and you're like, all right, I'm, yep. we're, you know, feeling good. All of a sudden, well, let's go for UPT. Yeah. Yeah, so I did UPT because, uh, you know, everyone in my chapter's like, just you do, just do utility. And I'm like, well, I'm brand new to this. I don't know what I'm doing at all yet. So, and where she was steadiness-wise was right on with UPT standards. So I was like, you know what, for me, for her, this will be cool. You know, I'll get to run another test, get more experience handling the dog, and then just take it easy from now, see what we need to work on, and then move on to utility. Mm-hmm. So. Well, talk to me about the utility journey, you know, the results, the the hiccups, the hurdles, the successes, you know, it's especially everybody's first utility journey. It's, it's uh, really, you know, unique to everybody. Yeah, so... It's way more work than I thought it was. I'll tell <laughs> right. you that. Um, just the incorporation of ducks and, you know, tracking and all that stuff. It was it was a lot, but it was totally worth it in the end. Um, now, every dog's going to run that test as long as they're able to that I have because those tests give you the tools to have a really good hunting dog. Like going back to what I said earlier, I just wanted a good hunting dog. Well, over time, I've learned doing these tests and training to that criteria even if you don't run the thing right those are the tools it gives you to be able to have that good dog yeah so yeah i mean i don't know listen to a lot of your podcasts so the duck search episodes were huge when i was going through it um super helpful uh there's a million ways to skin a cat at this stuff so i was like trying to just be like a sponge and take what i like from each person and put it together and try and use it on my dog and ended up working out so she's a prize three dog all summer, I thought I had a prize one dog like everybody else. <laughs> she was uh, holding up 
well. Like, in my opinion, I was like, eh, she's got fours across the board. I might be able to do this thing, make it to the big dance. Right. But uh, field run was outstanding. Got all fours. Handled a random quail that wasn't – we used Chucker at our chapter. <laughs> that wasn't out there. Flushed five yards from her. Down to two track running at her. It was insane. Handled it. But the drag uh, is what ended up getting me. Oh, man, the yep. drag. What she, what'd she do? Just fumble it, not want to bring it back all the way? What was she doing? She ran out, uh, got the duck, came right all the way back, got 20 yards, sat down and looked at me. Ah. So I had to give her a here, and uh, she's still just like, eh. Was it Was the drag the last uh, event of the day? No, it was the second. Okay. So, so I had to give her two commands, you know, I dropped me into a two right away mm -hmm. and, uh, I didn't take it well, to be honest, because <laughs> right. all summer long, guess who did perfect drags. And even in, uh, we ran an Ames clinic and she was the demo dog and the instructor was like, that's how you do a drag, you know, and <laughs> gave me mad props for it. And then test day, not well, what happened whatsoever. I, I always screw up the saying, but you know, they say it all the time for, for tests, you know, that's the day that the dog is never, ever is you know, on test day as they always ever, or what? I, I, yeah. I screw the saying up all the time. It's I true. think I think our mutual mutual buddy Dever, Dale is the one that kind of stuck that in my head. Yep. Uh, however, he says it, but he always butchered it. By the way, he reached out to me and told me that if we were going to do a profile, I had to ask you how many grouse you've killed. Oh boy, <laughs> the gloves are coming off. I guess. Uh, hey, he 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 gave me a a, a little teaser, and I'm like, all right. Well, I didn't even ask for elaboration. I just I'm like, all right. I'll ask him. <laughs> Oh, he knows what I'm thinking in my head right now, but I'm not going to say it on your <laughs> podcast. But anyways, uh, yeah, three or four. Okay. Um, like I said, adult onset hunter. I didn't know what a grouse even was before I started this. So learning cover, brand new dog, us learning together. Not the best chances. Shot a lot of woodcock, did all that. You know, had a great time with that. Yep. But, uh, yeah, and that and, you know. Shooting sometimes ain't so good. <laughs> so. We can all relate to that. Yeah. So, I mean, it, but grouse, man, it, you, woodcock is a little bit simpler for, sure. for somebody new starting out. You know, it's not a knock against woodcock. It just is what it is. But grouse, to, to connect the dots, especially if you have any kind of expectation or standard of dog work. It's tough. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, three, you say three or four as if, like, that's – that's just oh, just three or four. Man, three or four grouse, especially this was uh, your first season? Well, th this year would have been my third. But third, okay. Yeah, that that's total. So I didn't even a season, so it's even so worse. So we're averaging I'll one a year. Out. We're yeah. averaging one a year. About right now, yeah. All right. Well, we're living in Michigan. we we got to bump those numbers up a little right. bit. But, uh, you know, guys like Dale, you know, maybe – Maybe he can at least find you somebody else to go hunt with. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, actually, yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, Dale and our other buddy Rob um, have taught me a plethora of information about cover and the birds. I mean, Dale's like 78 years old, so he's been doing this his <laughs> whole life. Um, so he's able to kind of pass that info down. And, I mean, they shoot birds over my dog. I don't. Yep. Sometimes, you know, they just seem to be in the right place in the right time. But, yeah, this was her, her third real season, I'd call it. And, uh, you know, she started to put it together a lot more. She was working the birds a lot more appropriately. It wasn't bumping them. I uh, was kind of taking her time and, and even backing, you know, Dale and Rob's dogs. And we had a ball this year. We really yeah. did. So yeah. whatever, the numbers are what they are. But, yeah. you know. Good deal. That's not why I'm in it anyway. Right, right. Well, it'd be too easy to turn this into just a roast of Dale, and the <laughs> listeners don't even know, which, you know, Dale, who we're talking about. So sure. we'll just move on. Uh, are you planning on retesting this year? I'm not. No? No, but I'm good. Um, Content with the prize three? I like yeah, it. I love it. Yeah, I thought about running her again, but, you know, I'm not a breeder, and I just do this stuff for fun, yep. essentially, and to give my dog the best opportunity that I can to succeed by trying to help her give her those tools. I like it. So, you know, the prize three hurt a little bit because I knew what she was capable of, but at the end of the day, she's still a utility dog, right? Right. Exactly. And uh, I, I like that. So uh, are you planning anything else with her? You know, still a young dog? You you just want to have fun? Are you going to do any other trials, testing, any other organizations? Uh, I thought about do, dabbling in some HRC stuff. Okay. Um, that's a long shot, kind of a, more of a fantasy type thing because I'm a huge waterfowl guy. I use her for waterfowl as well. About 50-50 upland waterfowl mix for me. So uh, the retriever stuff is super interesting to me too. Gotcha. Love yeah. it. 
Well, uh, so you listen to the show, so you know the the two questions I ask on all these profile episodes. Yeah. Let's start off with the mistake. What's the biggest mistake that comes to mind first that you think other people would find relatable and they can possibly learn something from? Um, so, like, something I kind of learned uh, after a while that kind of transfers over from my job. I'm a corrections officer, and we have a saying in our field that's firm, fair, and consistent. And I think early on... I wasn't consistent okay. or any of those things to be that matter. And I've learned with dog training, and I'm by no means a professional trainer at all, um, but when you say a command, give it, and make sure you get your point across, not, you know, smacking dogs or anything like that, but there's different types of tonal voices and stuff that work, you know, right? Um, fair, what expectations do you have for the dog? Are they realistic? And hold them to it with consistency, right? So being consistent in that training, upholding that standard as much as you can and possible throughout the year, even in the off season, in the house, whatever. So that's kind of the, the thing I try and keep in the back of my mind when I'm running dogs and working things is, is those three things. Good advice. Yeah. Uh, next question. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite episode, guest, or topic that's kind of helped you something? You mentioned the duck search episode yeah. earlier, so we're going to nix that one. Yeah. Give me another one. Uh, force fetch series was great. Um, unfortunately, it was after I force fetched my dog, but I was able to take a couple uh, tools and fix some things, shine some things up, and then have even more tools in the tool belt for my next dog. But honestly, man, I love all your episodes. Uh, I take little things from each one of them and just really enjoy the show. So I, I, I think I've listened to about every episode you already, even going back way back. Oh, man. Because uh, I just put them on when I'm driving around going on hunting trips and stuff. So. But, yeah, the force fetch. And then I really enjoyed the Liberty Canine series. I was telling you that the other day, uh, uh, the one you the, did with him. The Ranger episode. Yeah, yeah. and the little uh, nuggets about tug and stuff like that. I love those, like, unconventional things in the bird dog world that make people scratch their head. Yeah. But they have merit, right? Yep. Uh, I like throwing grenades into the conventional, you yeah. know, never, ever do this. And right. it's like, here's somebody else. And not only can, do they say that they do it. They can actually explain why they do it. And yeah. then it's just like the people that are never, ever do this. And then it's uh, uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that one was really cool. Very, yeah. very cool episode. Awesome, I, so. lo I love it. So, uh, you know, we're sitting here at Pheasant Fest. It's early spring. Uh, already looking forward to the fall. What are the plans that you have going on this fall? So, in a perfect world, I'm hoping to take off the whole month of October. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen, but um, I got a little one at home, so it's hard to go away for a long periods of time so a lot of day trips up north we're about two hours north uh south of where there's birds um unless you're hunting pheasants and that's in michigan kind of a, a laughing tip topic but uh anywho day trips uh plan on going to the up for a week uh the guys that i'm with with the klm they're talking about doing a north dakota hunt um for a week so i might go out there and try my hand at sharpies and huns and all that fun stuff and ducks yeah um so yeah, just hunting as much as I can, getting out as much as I can, chasing turkey soon, even though I'm terrible <laughs> at that. But, hey, yeah, it's still being fun, outside. Though. Yeah. yeah, you can be terrible at a lot of things still have a lot of fun, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I, that's what I do every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tyler, I definitely appreciate it. It's great getting to know you a little bit, and, uh, you know, we'll have to stay in touch and, yeah. and get keep me updated. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks All for right. having me on. Appreciate it. Yep.